Hello traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the week ahead video for January 10th, 2021. Wow, January 10th, 2021. I know we're all happy to put 2020 behind us and hopefully 2021 will bring us much greater opportunities in the FX market. I do believe so. But before I get into those opportunities that might be coming your way, I have to mention, this is the time. This is it. You've been waiting for Forex Analytics to offer the best pricing of the year. Well, you got it now. So take advantage of this offer. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have already this week because you've been waiting all of December for this, this price. But for those of you that are just finding out, hey, guess what? The pricing is live. And, and if you want to try out Forex Analytics, even test it out, you can use the light version. It's only $19 a month. And the light, the light version even gives you access to all of the webinars, the app, um, you know, the mobile app, so you can download that, all the webinars that we offered, not just for free, but to the Forex Analytics subscribers. So check us out. And uh, when you come in, um, you know, and you take advantage of the premium offer, come in and take, uh, jump in the chat room because that's where we're at all day long um, while we're not on the webinars. So uh, do that. I'll see you there. Okay, let's talk about what had happened last week. Uh, obviously, last week was a very big week uh, in the markets. One of the reasons why it was such a big week in the markets is that we saw um, a, a, an election that actually tilted the power to the Democrats around midweek. And then we had some protests at the Capitol. Um, and that has led to this weekend uh, to President Trump being indefinitely removed from Twitter. And, you know, I'm not going to get into, you know, how I feel about that. I'm, I'm, but what I am going to say is the timing is a little suspect and he's only got a couple weeks left in office, but I, I, I'm wondering if there's going to be, you know, something more to, to this, if it's more of a coordinated effort, um, before maybe a formal impeachment process. And I am speculating, but the reason why I'm speculating is because I'm wondering, you know, how it's going to affect the equity markets should there be an impeachment. Some of you might say that, um, well, it shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't affect you. It shouldn't affect much. He's only got a couple of weeks, but um, going through that process might actually give the markets a reason to, um, you know, come down from such elevated levels. That that I think is the the risk. And so I'm going to tell you what I I see as the line in the sand for bulls in equities, and that's going to be right here. So this is a four hour chart of the S and P. This is a daily chart. I just pushed it over to a daily. You can see we're at the top of the channel. We're above some pretty big fib levels. Uh, obviously, divergent relative strength. We are we we went into overbought territory on Friday, but I, I wouldn't worry about equities unless you get below this thirty seven eighty. You can see it right here. Okay, now the reason why this is important is because what we saw last week is we saw the dollar, especially on Friday stage a reversal. Now, the dollar has been in a steep downtrend. And, you know, if you if you're listening to the face webinars, if you listen to the week ahead video, we, we were speculating that this might happen around this 161% extension of the this is the um, uh, uh, consolidation of this fall. That's 161% extension. Oh, it's right there. I'm sorry. This is the post COVID move. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought I was on a different chart. Um, the COVID spike higher, you know, here's the low, there's the high. Okay, you can see it here. Okay. Right. Now let me grab that fib. You can see it right here, All right? 161% extension, we were divergent. And so we were saying last week, you know, we're probably gonna make one more dip and then break out. We have. So. The question is, how far does this squeeze take us in the dollar? And my answer is, it depends more on what happens with equities. So if equities continue to sell off, we would see the dollar continue to squeeze higher, which means that the euro dollar 
would quite possibly break down towards you know some support we were we were speculating on friday that you know breaking this uptrend line we would you know get over to this support zone which we did that was friday on the face webinar if you guys were listening in um, remember the face webinar is free if you want to if you want to register so you can listen every day every morning you can hear my views and the rest of the team's views go click on the link in the description of this video if you're watching on youtube you can access that okay so the 161 percent extension of this last move higher comes in at 121 and a quarter okay below that it would then take us down towards 120. Now, 120 is a major breakout point, and you know whether we get down here or not probably has more to do with what happens with equities. Also, we have to pay attention to what's happening around the other FX pairs. One of the big leaders going into this year, and 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 a lot of last year actually, has been the Aussie dollar. The Aussie dollar has been rallying substantially. Uh, we've seen a breakout once we once we crack 70 i think it was 72 cents uh roughly you know right around here seven or 70 cents excuse me uh once we broke that it's it's just been off to the races copper's rec copper has gone straight up iron ore has gone straight up a lot of commodities have rallied risk has rallied stocks have rallied and the aussie started to show signs of weakness actually earlier this week and we stopped hitting higher highs so what I'm looking for now is if we break through this 7720 level, that's going to signal to me that currencies that are more sensitive to risk like the Aussie dollar are ready to come down a little bit more aggressively, maybe down towards 76 cents, uh, maybe even a little bit further than that. Because if you look at this as a channel, right, what you see, this is a channel. What we had here is a break higher out of the channel. And now that we're coming back down into the channel, this is what Dale Pinkert, who's our host of our, our, our webinars every day, would call a throw over. That's when you get this throw over the top of a channel, or you can, you can, you can, you can do it the opposite you know, on a channel that's moving lower. When you go outside of the channel, then you dip back inside, that's a bearish reversal. And so this could actually lead us to a little bit further decline in the Aussie dollar. Again, a lot of that's going to have to do with what happens with equities. Now, you might have seen I had a chart up of gold. I want you to pay really close attention to gold because gold has followed risk more than anything. And gold, we, we have this double top. We broke through this 1900 support. And if you, even if you don't, subscribe to forex analytics but you you see or read my chart of the day that's tweeted out by us it's in our blogs here's our chart of the day this was on thursday and you're you can see i was looking through for this break here below 1900 or 1895 and i said you know that's going to be a bearish breakdown if it does that and it was we broke 1895 we dropped uh, percentage wise, well, it was about a 4% drop intraday on Friday. So you, and you, again, if you're listening to the or reading the blog, you would have known that that would have, you know, we would have seen a sell off. It was a little bit more aggressive than I thought. But the reason why I'm pointing this out is because with gold selling off and gold looking weak, false breakout here of a channel. This is, a, this is a, almost an example of a throw over again, where you, you come outside of a channel and then you break into the channel, that's bearish. With gold picking up steam to the downside, and if equities start to do that as well, because the dollar and gold have an inverse relationship, the risk would be that the dollar could really pick up to the, um, pick up to the upside on a squeeze because you know everybody's leaning towards a, a, a bearish dollar and if you remember from the last several week ahead videos the one thing i pointed out and i continue to point i'll continue to point out is it doesn't matter what bank research you read everybody's top trade of 2021 is sell dollars i don't think that that's the wrong trade i actually think that that's the right trade the problem is is when you have the consensus everybody thinking that the euro is going to go to 130 
it's probably going to come back and test some support at 120, maybe even down into the high teens before 130 actually happens. So I think the risk is that you start to see the dollar really start to gain traction, especially if the S&P and the equity markets in general start to sell off. There's one last chart I want to um, I want to talk about, and I'm going to bring it to your attention. It's something that uh, that that has been bugging me over the course of the last couple of weeks. And one of my colleagues that I trade with, he 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 was saying, hey, you know, maybe you know, with equities up here, and you know, Donald Trump's going to be leaving the office. We're going to have a you know new um, uh, a, a new uh, uh, president and, 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 you know, democratic lawmakers that are going to use, a, you know, do a lot of stimulus and put a lot of money in the markets. Maybe volatility can finally settle down. One of the things about volatility is if you follow daily sentiment index, which is the DSI, it is at eight right now, which is arguably about as extreme bearish as you're going to see. Sometimes you'll see maybe seven, but it doesn't stay there that long. The problem with that is that if volatility starts to pick up, it's usually a result of equities selling off. You can see how since COVID, volatility hasn't broken back below 20. And I think the market's wondering why. Maybe because the market is ready for another risk off episode. And that's why we have to start paying attention to volatility. If volatility starts to increase, that is another reason why we might see equities come down and the dollar continue to gain strength. Okay. Now, uh, let's think about what's happening this next week that could create that. Okay. First of all, we have on Monday, we have ECB President Lagarde will be speaking. Now, uh, she's also speaking on Wednesday. I don't know if she's going to be able to move the euro much but it's possible and you know remember the euro dollar makes up more than 50 percent of the basket of the dollar index so if the you know if the euro goes one direction then that means the dollar is going in the opposite direction so you know perhaps she tries to talk down the euro and the strength of the euro and the dollar starts to just to gain steam because of that okay also, at the end of the week, we have retail sales out of uh, out of the U.S., excuse me. And we also have Fed Chairman Powell is speaking on Thursday. So there's a couple events that could move the dollar a little bit as we go into next week. So the reason why I, I, I point all this out is because I think we are on the cusp of a dollar near-term rally. And I'm not sure how long it could last. I'm not sure, you know, could it, could it, you know, gain some strength for, you know, the, you know, for the next couple of weeks, it, it is entirely possible. And if it does, you know, we could be trading up towards 91, 91 and a half, maybe even further than that, depending on how risk off we get. But there are a lot of murmurings about inflation. We've seen a big move in yields this week. If yields continue to rally, maybe that that provides a tailwind for the dollar. If we see some risk off, maybe that'll do it. Um, but I think we have to be on the lookout of the dollar potentially gaining some more strength after a very prolonged period of the last, you know, eight nine months of moving lower. We might be due for a short term squeeze. It might look something like this that happened from August to September. You know, we might get a squeeze to 92, 93. Where does that put the euro? Probably closer to 120, All right? Now, I'm gonna ask you for a favor. You guys listen to the week ahead video. Well, a lot of you and probably most of you listening in, listen in every week. So if you do and you see this on social media, give us a retweet. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube because it makes me feel better for producing these every week. It, week in, week, week out, and sometimes Greg Horvat will do it or Steve might do it, but for the most part, it's me and then our edit, editorial team that puts it puts out the, the video. Our whole team feels a lot better when you give us a thumbs up and you give us a share 
and you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our great interviews. So guys and gals, I look forward for you to be part of the Forex Analytics family. Don't forget to uh, to check, check out our pricing. And remember, if you wanna try to get it for free, check out Pepperstone Securities if you're outside the US and Canada. Check out what they have to offer and use this link right here to open your live trading account. All right, guys and gals, I'll talk to you soon. My name is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Have a great remainder of your weekend, and I'll see you on the FACE webinar on Monday.